Welcome to another Flip Classroom. Today we're going to work on the modern period. So if you're ready, get your brains ready for another Flip Classroom. Where are we in history? Let me help you. Peninsula Ibérica, 15th century. The king of Aragon and the queen of Castilla have got married so as to form an alliance with one purpose, to expel the Muslims away from the kingdom of Granada. In the year 1492, these governments together were so as to expel them and they did it. They reconquered the kingdom of Granada. That was not the only thing that they conquered. After that, they conquered the Canary Islands and in the year 1512, they continue with the Kingdom of Navarra. So, in the year 1512, the Catholic kings have reconquered the whole peninsula, and it is as we know it today. They didn't conquer the Kingdom of Portugal. That was set apart. ¿Qué máquinas estos reyes católicos? Ya te digo. They were really good. They made strategies for absolutely everything. And we will learn more about the way they had children and the way they married their children with other people. It will be very interesting. ¿Y conquistaron alguna cosita más? Yes. Melilla y Ceuta. Really? And anything else? One more thing. America. They were really good. Now, we have to ask the question, how did they discover America? Well, now is when we have to talk about our friend Christopher Columbus. Christopher Columbus was an explorer. And the most important thing, he knew that the world was around. He thought that when everybody or when most people believed that the planet was flat. I'm sure you can remember that this is the way people used to believe the planet was. But Christopher Columbus believed something else. He probably learned in China or in India that the world was round. So he thought, well, if we find a faster way to get to India to buy the things that we need, we will be the first ones. But as it happens with all the good projects, you need money. So he needs something or someone to finance him. The first thing he did was to go to the king of Portugal. He went there and he said, king of Portugal, may you finance my trip can I get some money? And the king said, No, no, no. Then he went to see the kings of Spain. He asked them if they could have an interview, and they said no. But through a good friend, he finally got into court and presented the project, and the king accepted it. Yay! So then, Christopher Columbus, an Spanish guy, conquered or discovered America? Uy, como te oiga, Alberto. Christopher Columbus was not Spanish, he was Italian. And he got some money. He got three ships. La Pinta, La Niña y La Santa Maria. They departed from Huelva on August the 3rd, 1492. And they went all the way around the planet. They had to make a brief stop in Canary Islands because one of the ships broke. But after that, they continued thinking that they were going to reach to India. What was their surprise when they found America? They never found out that they had discovered a new continent. They probably thought that they had discovered a new part of India or something like that. Anyways, the thing is that they had discovered a new continent. America, Americo Vespucci, was a new explorer that went to the new continent twice. He made two trips. And the difference was that Americo Vespucci wrote a lot of, a lot of stories and documentaries about this new world, this new continent, and people liked it so much, Their book, his books were so much distributed and copied everywhere that people called the new world, the new continent, America, in honor to his name. When Christopher Columbus arrived to America, he found out that there were people in that continent. They called these people pre-Columbian civilizations, and there were three main groups, the Aztecs, the Mayans, and the Incas. Los Aztecas, los Mayas, y los Incas. They were different. That's why they could differentiate them. For example, the Aztecs lived in the Valley of Mexico. The emperor lived in the capital. 
and they were polytheistic. That means that they believed in different gods. For example, they worshipped the god of the sun and the god of war. The Mayans live in the south of Mexico. That's where we know Guatemala and Honduras today. The capital, the capital was Chichen Itza. It's very famous for its pyramids. And they had a leader in each city. The Mayans were very organized. They had different cities and they were scientifically advanced. Indeed, if you visit Chichen Itza, you will find out many interesting things about the way the pyramids were constructed, about the way they understood the constellations, the sun. It's really special. Finally, the Incas. They live in the area where we know today Peru, Ecuador, Bolivia. The capital was Cuzco. And the Incas were also polytheistic. Remember, they believed in different gods. They also worshipped the sun and the moon. And they believed that the emperor was the son of the god Sun. Spain wanted to conquer all these territories before other countries could do it. So he started to proclaim expeditions. Expeditions made by Hernando Cortés, Fernando Pizarro, famous explorers that tried to conquer these territories as fast as possible. For example, in your book you can read that Hernán Cortés conquered the Aztec Empire just in three years, from 1519 to 1521. How was that possible in three years? Because they had better weapons. They were better prepared for war and the Indians, the Aztecs, the Mayans, the Incas were confident at the beginning and they paid the penalty with that. Francisco Pizarro conquered the Inca Empire and it took him a little bit longer, but he did too. How could they control such a big territory? To control these territories, Spain proclaimed something that is called vice royalty. A vice royalty is a government that belongs to another government. Spain didn't want to bring the queen and the king to live in America. So what they did was to proclaim two different governments that they were Spanish. The one in the north was the vice royalty of Spain and the one in the south was the vice royalty of Peru. But all these governments were part of the Spanish kingdom, okay? Now, the society was made up for, by the four different groups. The first one was Spanish people, people coming from the peninsula to live in America. Very rich, a lot of business, very happy. The second one were the mestizos. Los mestizos eran los que tenían un padre español y una madre nativa. Es decir, una madre inca, maya o azteca. Their children were important if the father protected and took well care of it, or they were part of the poor society. It depends on every family. They also had something that were called slaves. Slaves. Why did they need slaves? Well, remember, in America, había muchos campos de algodón. Y estos campos de algodón tenían que trabajarlos. Spanish people didn't want to do that. So they brought slaves, African people, to America so as to work hard collecting all this cotton for the Spaniards. I know, it's not fair, but that's the way we did it. Finally, the Native Americans. We have talked about them before. Mayas, Aztecas, Indians, Incas. They were living in that territory and they were really bad treated. We are not very well considered for these actions, my friends. It was part of our history and is part of our dark history. But I wonder, if Spain was so rich and it had so many territories, how is it that Spain is not such a rich country today? In the next video we'll talk about them. We'll talk about the next kings, what they did, the children that they had, how did they get married, all these things in the next Lit Classroom. Bye.